Now let's uh, turn to today's perspective, and it's a term in the Anglo-Saxon world that, whether you like it or not, we're all pretty used to. Born out of the anti-racist struggles of African Americans in the 1950s, woke initially just meant awake or being politically aware, but it's kind of morphed, turned into a word often used nowadays by far right-wingers as a derogatory term to attack forms of activism, such as anti-racism, anti-sexism, LGBTQ plus rights, for example, a word used to stigmatise people involved in fighting for what they see as a just cause. We're here in France, well, it's a term that's only just being heard and discussed, really. But one man who's ahead of the bandwagon, if you like, is Alex Maudieu. He's a, a doctor of political science and author of La Panique Woke, Anatomy d'un Anathème, ou Woke Panic Anatomy of a Reactionary Offensive. Thanks very much for coming in and talking to Thank us Thank you for today. having me. Tell us a little bit more, first of all, about where the term actually comes from. And I mentioned it very briefly. Yeah, like you said, uh, the term comes from African-American uh, vernacular English. It's been used for quite a long time. Not quite quite as a slogan. It's not uh, a term that was formally recognized by any organization until uh, the 2010s, um, but mostly in the way you, you, you described it. It started becoming more of a derogatory term on uh, the internet, uh, turning when the, uh, uh, the BLM movement developed. Mm -hmm. And as far as France is concerned, uh, it became a term that was a sort of reified, turned into a, 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 um, the description of an ideology uh, in 2021, when uh, one of our local conservative think tanks decided to develop a uh, note that was about uh, what we uh, call in France uh, le wokeism, mm. <laughs> wokeism, yeah. as as it were, as it as if it were an ideology imported from the U.S. and specifically U.S. humanities and uh, social science co campuses into France as a way to criticize its uh, way of life. And I uh, I very much disagree with that way of uh, seeing things, as it seems to be more of the importation of a moral panic or a crusade against, like you said, equalitarian movements uh, in our country. Because, I mean, initially, it, it, I'm talking about the US here and, and the UK as well, to a certain extent, it, it was a positive term, wasn't it? I mean, it was thought of as a, as a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, for many people, it still is, indeed. Quite. And there's a lot of people that use it in this way in France at the moment, that say, well, if you're going to call us woke, then we're going to uh, sort of uh, um, take the term for ourselves and claim it as a uh, positive thing. That, that happened with uh, intellectual uh, Roque Adelo, uh, recently, when she said, "Well, woke is a good thing if you if you think of it." Um, now, when it comes to the way it's been used in the French media and by the French government and politicians, it's been almost uh, unanimously in a negative way, and uh, I think it's quite telling that it's it, it remained an English word in a, in a in a country that likes to uh, to uh, translate everything and is very aware. And, and worried about anglicisms, uh, so uh, I, I think it's uh, it's it's yeah it's been mostly used as a way to demonize people. Now of course there's people who want to claim it, and that's uh, that's their prerogative, and there's nothing nothing bad about that. So it's almost like uh, the, the word became to, to prominence here, and we kind of miss that bit where it was a, a positive thing and just became uh, discriminatory and contradictory. Yes, absolutely. And the French conservatives, and especially conservative intellectuals, have a way of doing that again and again. Uh, for instance, we had the importation by scholars, by activists, a few years back, of the framework of intersectionality, which is uh, this way of seeing the ways people, specific people, are at the crossroads, as it were, of different forms of uh, oppressions or mar marginalizations. And uh, we almost skipped the debate about how this can influence policy in a positive way, uh, for instance, by creating special programs for special people, and just went straight into the uh, panic of, how my, uh, oh my God, we have uh, what, what they call neo, uh, uh, intersection neo-feminists who want to uh, wage war against men and so on and so forth. Um, and that happens again and again and again in the, in the history of our country. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's turned as well, isn't it, that kind of link between what's known as council culture as well, uh, that, that sort of, uh, uh, you know, people feeling, or from a right-wing perspective, that you can't say anything without being criticised. I mean, do those people have a bit of a point? That's the, a bit of a problem with wokeism, that it means that you can't say anything about anything without it becoming a problem. Well, in that case, I, I, I like to ask, what is it that you can't say anything about? Uh, because the fact is that we do have a certain number of issues on which we're all very happy that it's not possible to say anything uh, in a specific way. Uh, 
uh, without being criticized. Uh, I, I like to take the example that in the 90s we had a, a, a year when a very racist song became sort of a, uh, the top of the hit parade for a while. And uh, yeah, you couldn't do that song without being in serious trouble nowadays. And I think that's a very good thing. Uh, now, of course, there's a point to be made that some people have had their careers, their livelihoods, uh, their reputation threatened by uh, allegations that were put on the social media or in the public sphere. But uh, when you look at it, actually, the, the right wing does that quite as much as the left wing. And when you, when you look forward into what is policy proposal, uh, what is the answer that the right has brought to these problems is usually we are either going to preemptively reduce uh, uh, freedom of speech, uh, that was the proposal, for instance, made by Jean-Michel Blanquer, the Minister of the Education in France, who offered to uh, reduce the, the possibility, for instance, for uh, organizers to, 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 to organize along uh, uh, lines of racism. And uh, we are going to uh, make cancel culture of our own, uh, which is an issue, of course. Yeah, I mean, one of the criticisms come from comedians, isn't it? That they feel that they can't say anything without people um, criticizing. They can't make jokes about disabled mm. people or about uh, LGBTQ people or you know, whatever that category might be. And that's one of the criticisms of it as well. And do you think it's also a, a bit of an age um, barrier? Because younger people are perhaps a little bit more used to having all these issues that people are very very much aware of, um, but maybe older people are, are, are not so aware of it. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I have one colleague, uh, Vincent Tiberi, who made a research in France showing that there is indeed a value gap between different generations uh, in France. Uh, so, for instance, the youth tends to be more accepting of LGBT people, they tend to be less racist, uh, they tend to be more uh, in favour of equalitarian val uh, values. At the same time, there has always been a consensus on the fact that some people should be marginalised or excluded from the public sphere. If you were an openly transgender person in France uh, back a few decades ago, well, you would be shunned, uh, and that was the fact. Now, it seems to be more if you... It seems to be getting more into... If you're an openly transphobic person, you tend to be shunned. And then we enter into a political debate, which is what... Uh, it's not a question of are people get, uh, getting shunned, but who is getting shunned and for what reasons? And uh, what I'm offering, what I'm inviting my conservative and reactionary friends to do is enter into political debates. Let's talk about what sort of society we want and then we can say what is good and what is, is bad instead of pretending to be offended by uh, things that are, well, debates and struggles around mostly policy issues. Good to discuss the debate and good to uh, find out as well how it's now entering Thank into you so French much. culture as well. Thanks very much for coming to us uh, and talking to us today, Alex uh, Mahoudia, who's a doctor in political science and author of his book La Panique Woke.